metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. So, this is what the future will look like? Sweet sauerkraut! is a reminder about today's experiment. This is very important, everyone. We need all of you there. All of you. Also, it is crucial that no one is late. No one. To sum up, everyone there, no one late. Again, this is an important and highly fascinating experiment. Everyone must be present. We will not begin until all of you are there. To sum up again, everyone there, no one late. Very important. So, um, huzzah! Very exciting day. My horns are throbbing with anticipation, and so should yours be. Or if you don't have horns, then talons, ears, trotters, whatever tingles on you when you're kidding. Nothing's tingled on me in 30 years. I don't have time for another dadgum experiment. Hi there! I'm happy to see you all together on this wonderful day! Here on the 14th day of March, we're about to do an experiment which promises to be a watershed moment in the history of life! It isn't just by chance we're doing this on the birthday of... that greatest ever physicist, yes, Albert Einstein! <laughs> Can you remind me one more time what he's famous for? Very well, since you asked that nicely. Big genius Einstein gave us the awesome and the revolutionary E equals MC squared. It's just a silly formula, so what? Nothing's tingling here. That equation's very famous, but what does it mean? Oh, come on, who gives a turnip? Just get your experiment over with so we can all leave. I got stuff to do. Um, wait, wait. It is a vital concept to understand, to appreciate Einstein and his work on the nature of the universe. It's important that you know the laws of physics that govern the world in which we live. Let's look at how the equation begins. There, with the letter E for energy. Energy is the driving force of the universe. Without it, the universe could never have formed at all. Without energy, the sun would stop shining and the planets would no longer revolve around it. In fact, stars and planets would never have existed at all. Energy is what holds the particles of our universe together. Should we worry then that the universe's energy will run out like a battery? No. Whatever we burn, put out, whatever rises or falls, there's still the same amount of energy. In 1850, the first law of thermodynamics was discovered, and it confirms that energy can change form or move from place to place, but the total amount of energy does not change. All right, but if energy doesn't really go anywhere, why do BB's batteries need to be changed all the time? Yeah, a battery will lose its charge, but the energy doesn't just disappear, it changes into another form of energy. BB will run, jump into other useful things, and when BB throws a ball, for example, his battery's energy is passed to the ball through him. And when the ball hits the ground, VAMO! The energy is transmitted to the ground, and so on. Do you want some of my energy? Mm-hmm. Ha! Ooh! <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you want some of my, uh, energy? Touch me and I'll take all of it. All right. Now we understand what the first letter of Einstein's brilliant equation means. Time that we moved on to the letter M for mass. Mass is another essential component of the universe. In the same way we must have energy for the universe to exist, we must also have mass for the universe to exist. 
Should we worry then that the universe's mass will run out? No. Whatever we burn, put out, whatever rises or falls, there's still the same amount of mass. In 1789, conservation of mass was discovered. That mass is neither created nor destroyed in chemical reactions. I've said something similar to this already, haven't I? All right, we've learned about the formula. The universe is divided into mass here and energy there. So what? Old news. <laughs> Please just do your experiment already. Not quite yet, my dear impatient friend. What you just said is exactly what Einstein's theory proves wrong. Einstein, with this formula, showed us that energy and mass are really one and the same thing. My goodness. Originally, it was thought that there was no link between mass and energy. Energy was separate and mass was separate. But early in the 20th century, Albert Einstein changed everything when he discovered his famous formula, E equals mc squared. A surprising conclusion could be made based on the formula. Energy and mass are interchangeable. If energy is expended, mass will start growing in response. If an object's mass is destroyed, energy will be released in response. Remember the laws of the conservation of energy and mass? It turned out they didn't offer a complete explanation. Another law took their place. That law says that if energy is expended in one place, the loss of energy will be replenished with the corresponding amount of mass and vice versa. Everyone understand then? The wonderful revelations found in this little formula of Einstein's? Just glorious, yes? Got it. For Rosa to get rid of some of her mass, she has to turn it into energy first. <laughs> Grow up. Lots of energy can be released even out of a small particle. You can get a crazy amount of energy out of one teensy atom. Ever hear of a little thing called the atomic bomb? Huh? Hey, could we build like some atomic fireworks? Could that be the experiment we're supposed to be doing? We will do no such thing. I absolutely forbid any experiments that would result in bodily harm. <laughs> Everyone calm down. We're not going to be blowing anything up, all right? Look, the equation of Einstein has many useful, nice applications. For one, nuclear power stations give us power for stuff, which is good. Building a power plant's way too much work. Let's blow something up. Uh, question, all right? Uh, the letter, the last one, what does that one mean? Ah, um, that is a vital part of the equation. The letter C stands for the speed of light. The speed of light is the fastest anything can go. Nothing can move faster than light. Not even our most powerful machine can come close to it. It's the maximum speed. But what if I run while holding a flashlight? Wouldn't the light be moving faster then? No. It's amazing, but the speed of light produced by a light source in motion will be the same as if it were motionless. Light cannot be accelerated because it is already the fastest thing in the universe. It is one of the universe's laws. The speed of light is the universe's speed limit. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's a bummer. What's the point of trying to set a new speed record if there's a limit you can never break? But that limit is extremely high. The speed of light is about 300 million meters per second. Besides, we don't compete against light. Being the best bunny is still possible for you. The speed of light defines how much energy our universe contains. The smallest particle contains enormous amounts of energy. The speed of light squared shows the immense energy contained in the universe. I still don't understand what all that fuss is about that silly C squared. It isn't as important C squared as the speed of light as it is that there is nothing in the universe that can move faster. It is the ultimate limit. I feel like time has stopped. Know the universe's slowest speed? Huh? It's the speed of this meeting that we're in. What you said about time stopping is very interesting. The very fact that the speed of light is a constant led us to figure out that time is not. Time is relative. So time can be compressed like this or stretched like that. What we've learned is that our old friend time can alter its speed. Awesome. Well, well, how about that? And what that fact means, if we were ever actually able to meet speeds that were fast enough, then we could leave time behind. Now what now? That, in fact, is the objective of the experiment. 
Once we're going the speed of light, our slow time will fall behind us. To us in here, it will have felt like five minutes. But the rest of the world will have lived a regular entire day. Does that mean it'll be tomorrow by the time we get back? Huh? Yes, it will. Let's get going. Holy carrots. Let's get this crate up to light speed. Acceleration to light speed commencing. Ooh, that's fast. Mm. Could we have come back to the wrong place? Looks like my calculations might have been just a little bit off. So this is what the future will look like? Sweet sauerkraut. I just might have all this figured out. I think I understand what happened to this place without us. Or if you don't have horns, then talons, ears, trotters, whatever tingles on you when you're kidding. Nothing's tingled on me in 30 years. I don't have time for another dadgum experiment. Can we travel back into the past and correct everything? I don't think the physics of today can provide an answer to that fine question. Of course, we are in the future. If any physicists swim by, we can ask them. They'll know. 